So good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Loop Q Prize uh, Award uh, event. Uh, and I welcome you cordially to this award event on behalf of the Loop AI group staff. So big thanks to all the Loop Q Prize team. Patrick Ilen, Loop Q Prize judging panel member, what's coming in the future of AI? Uh, it's, it's certainly an, an exciting time to be working in AI and uh, there's always new things to learn, and I think we uh, even learned a lot just from the people who submitted things uh, for the prize. And so people are, are eager to think if we're any closer to the goal that, uh, you know, we're all going towards of, of having an AI that is maybe something like you see in science fiction, something that seems to think for itself and have a kind of intelligence that is similar to, to a human intelligence. Uh, Google developed this dialogue system called Lambda, uh, and one of their engineers... Uh, you know, tweeted out uh, some conversations that he had with Lambda and said, uh, I, you know, I, I think we could say that this thing is sentient, or I don't think that we can't say that it's not sentient. Uh, you know, how do we know that this is not already a thinking machine? And it seems to have, you know, some kind of self-awareness and all of the qualities that, uh, you know, we normally would infer when we are, you know, trying to assess if something is is sentient. What is consciousness? What does it mean to be alive and to be a self? How we will know when we have actually created a sentient AI or an intelligence that is on par with a human intelligence. I frankly think it will be pretty easy to spot when it happens. Um, and I'll let you know how we'll know uh, when we get there. But there are a few sort of basic qualities that we always associate with consciousness. And one of them is what I just said, sort of self-awareness, you know, this idea that I am here and I exist in the world and I can do things and I have agency, which is this idea of intentionality, right? We all have intentions uh, which means that I can sort of look at the world and I can produce my own plans for what I want to do in the world. This is something that, as I said, philosophers have been debating about for a long time. And in the past century, in the 20th century, this, there was a very similar question that psychologists were asking uh, on the subject of animal consciousness. And, you know, some people argued that animals were conscious and other people argued that they were not. There was a famous kind of study that was done in 1925 by uh, a scientist, uh, a psychologist named Wolfgang Köhler. And uh, Köhler really wanted to get at this idea of animal consciousness. And so he devised a number of experiments that involved uh, different animals, but many of them chimpanzees. Later behaviorists such as B.F. Skinner was another famous one. Um, and then a guy named Robert Epstein, who was a psychologist at, at Harvard. Uh, and Epstein in the early 80s uh, took it upon himself to try to recreate a lot of the experiments that Kohler did with chimpanzees, but doing them with pigeons and animals that seemed to be a lot more dumb. Uh, this pigeon was able to, to move the box, climb on it, get the reward, and there was really no evidence that there was any kind of consciousness happening other than this kind of mechanistic mechanism of a stimulus happening and then a reward happening and it training the, the pigeon to do these things. So, so here we have this Google engineer who, um, you know, seems pretty sure that Lambda is, is conscious or, or sentient or, or, or self-aware. Um, and, you know, it could be that there's consciousness there, or it could be that things are just kind of working in this uh, automated stimulus response type of way that's similar to what Epstein did with, with, the, um, with the pigeons. Why, why is it that, uh, that this Google engineer might look at something that looks very much like consciousness and immediately jump to the conclusion that consciousness is there? talk for just a second here about two types of sort of errors that uh, people are prone to make, and we call them type one and type two, two errors. Uh, a type one error is where you see something, you think you see something, but actually that thing isn't really there. Uh, a type two error is the opposite of that, where you think that something is not happening or you're failing to see something that actually is there. We will know when we've created uh, AI that is actually sentient, that is actually has a kind of human intelligence. And uh, based on sort of what, what I've been telling you here, what I would argue is that 
we will know we've created something that is very much like human intelligence uh, when we have an AI that begins to develop its own mythologies. Um, AI will take in its experiences and it's going to have very different experiences from humans because they'll have different types of sensory systems and different experiences of the world. And it will make sense of the world in a way that's very, very different from the way that humans view the world. Uh, and because of that, I think the first thing we're gonna see when we do have AI that develops sentience and actual intention is that it's going to start making explanatory structures about the world. But what will we see? I do think that what we'll see in the near future uh, is AI that starts integrating streams of data from multiple places. You know, humans, we don't just communicate by language, we communicate by gesture, we communicate by having knowledge about things in the world and looking at things and having mutual knowledge. Um, and all of these things go into us being able to make an interpretation of what is going on at any one point during a conversation or during interactions with other people, other consciousness, being able to infer what their intentionalities are, and then being able to make plans uh, and carry them out and, and project into a future uh, that we then sort of make happen via our actions and our communications and all of that. Um, and this is something that uh, if you look at what's going on in AI right now, being able to integrate video and image and language and uh, other aspects of the world, just sort of knowledge about the world, knowledge graphs, that sort of thing. Um, this is sort of the exciting part that we're at right now. So I'm very excited about the future. Um, I you know, am especially excited having seen all of the entries from the Loop Q Prize. Um, I know we have a lot of very smart and talented people out there. Um, and uh, I, I also can't wait to see what we come up with for next year's Loop Q, Q Prize, which uh, I think will be even more exciting, and I hope to see you all then. Um, we want to uh, remain for a few minutes once again uh, on the topic of AI and uh, the future. Davide Casaleggio, Loop Q Prize Advising Panel Member and President at Casaleggio Associati. Um, I was asked to, to say a few thoughts on uh, what singularity is and will we be actually able to recognize self-consciousness in AI? Well, when I uh, go in, in my car now, I actually uh, leave control to the car. Uh, I don't question where the navigator tells me to go. Uh, so I just leave it. Uh, I won't understand it. I will just uh, obey uh, the uh, AI. So there are actually today uh, places or uh, times where we leave uh, control to AI and we don't question how it actually made that decision. We just uh, uh, think it, it will be a good decision. So this is something that's already happening. So there are some, uh, some occasions where we have already tried to uh, compare our intelligence in a strict way, obviously tied to a single game uh, with, uh, uh, um, with an AI to, to try to see who wins. In many cases, uh, AI is better than us in doing that. We can, we can combine, uh, for example, in chess now, the best, uh, the best players are the combined players where human intelligence gets combined to AI intelligence. Will we be able to recognize a submarine passing by while we are swimming at the seaside? Uh, I don't think we will. So I don't think we will be able to recognize uh, when AI will pass that singularity uh, limit. How uh, AI can start off it will probably start off uh, slowly, but it will accelerate. We will be probably seeing some new uh, emerging intelligence uh, that not necessarily will be able to understand fully. So uh, this will be something we should be thinking out and thinking about in, uh, in the next few years. We get some insight from the judging panel from Sai Dunoyer, the head of AI at Loop, Loop AI Group. We have given the choice between two global challenges that solve real world problems. So the first one was a very challenging 
speech emotion detection task. And the second one was a crop yield detection task. We would like to thank all participants for their contribution and their hard work. Uh, we have evaluated in the judging panel the submission based on five pillars the completeness of the solution, the performance of the chosen model, and the innovation in the method and the model used, the quality of the deliverable, and finally, the quality of the code. We have uh, appreciated the diversity of the proposed solutions, and some of them were excellent and paper level. So this is the great moment. It's time to know the winner of the Loop Q Prize Award. And the winner is Diego Biagini, Università di Bologna. Claire Matuca, Loop Q Prize Advising Panel Member, a country representative at Kenya Pan America uh, Tech Foundation. Um, first of all, again, as you have said, Congratulations to every single student, every single person who took their time to participate. I'm sure you took away a lot of lessons. Um, from hackathons, um, in as much as yes, you do want the best accuracy, um, I feel like there are also other things that you get to learn and you get to consider, such as well-written code, um, how this solution that you're proposing will actually work in the real world, and so many other things. I hope you took a couple of lessons from it. And I know it was quite a struggle getting that accuracy all the way up. You probably tried a million models with a different, a few different parameters um, so many times before you finally got to your solution. And a big congratulations to all of you. It is not a mean feat. Um, I would just like to further encourage you guys in your journey in towards AI. AI has so much opportunity. Um, so many people, uh, or rather statistics currently are saying that um, it will contribute trillions of dollars to the economy. Um, and in this contribution, it's not just about money, it's also about helping people making life easier so that we can then as human beings focus on what what actually needs our creativity um, and reducing all these mundane tasks um, so keep going keep the journey going and congratulations again our congratulations to Diego Biagini once again of the University of uh, Bologna, University of Bologna for the uh, final prize. And we are ready to start the journey for the 2023 prize. So uh, keep on uh, doing a great job like you did uh, this year. Thank you very much to all of you and see you soon.